Are you tired of making dull videos? Maybe you're wanting to make them a little more interesting and have some objects moving around. Ow! If you saw my last video, the short, you'll get this. My name is William Justice, and I may have a few ideas to help you out. A while ago, I created an effect for DaVinci Resolve 17 that makes it really easy to have some movement and have some objects and things going around the screen to make it a little bit more dynamic. It's really simple, but it turns out there's a lot of things you can do with it. In this video, I'm gonna show you 10 different ways to use this effect to create something interesting for your videos. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is just some basic animations. There's five quick presets and a lot of different options so that you can set it up to do just about anything that you want. Okay, it's raining cats and dogs out here. Obviously with particles, so we have to have the falling snow effect. Actually, it's kind of cold in here. Hmm. Now I'm getting hot. Oh man, yeah, I'm hot. To get started, let's take an image and drag it into our timeline. Next, we just need to apply the effect. So go to effects, and in the effects area, find the William Justice folder, just image particles, and drag that right on top. I almost didn't make this video because it's taking the fusion particle system and allowing you to use it from the timeline, but I think there's some interesting things we can do with it. To customize the effect, go to the inspector, click effects, find just image particles. The versions are the different presets, so you can click a version number to try a different preset. The top section lets you adjust the number of particles, how long they're on the screen, which is the lifespan, and the size over, over their life. The size may not always show up, um, looks like it's a glitch. To get this to show up, just click one of these other tabs here and click back and you'll see the size over life graph. The next section down lets you set the velocity, the angle, spin, um, so if you want them moving faster or to change the direction, you can adjust this section down here. The movement tab adjusts the turbulence and some of the friction as well as it allows you to set a blur. Region lets you set where the particles are emitted from. So in this case, um, they're being emitted all throughout the screen. We can bring this all the way down. Let's say the width is zero and height is zero. And you'll see it's all in the middle of the screen. Now let's, if we go back to the controls, let's make them a little bit smaller. And we can adjust this graph here. This is the size over life. You'll see those, they're gonna start out small. They're gonna get a little bit bigger. And then before they go away, they're gonna get smaller again. So if we go back over to region, if we want the particles to be emitted from like say the upper left-hand corner, we just have to change the X offset and Y offset. And the particles are now being emitted from the upper left-hand corner. Let's uh, boost the velocity a little bit and you'll see that they're kind of spreading out. That's because of the angle variance. Each particle is getting its own angle varying between zero and 360 degrees. So let's set that to zero. And that means all the particles are gonna be emitted in the same direction. And we'll speed it up a bit. You'll see the particles are slowing down there and they're kind of all stopping. And that's because of the friction. So if we reduce the friction, the particles are gonna fly a little bit faster and they're not gonna stop as quick. Go to my website, buildjustice.com, click the timeline effects, and you can download the just image particles DRFX file. Um, once you download it, you can double click on it and that'll get it installed into Resolve. And this is something that um, really, it's a great introduction to the particle system. You don't have to go into Fusion. Um, so I think if you're curious, I'd encourage you to drop it on an image and start adjusting the parameters to kind of see how it works and see the different things that you can create. Okay, the next thing, we can create a really interesting text animation. To set up the text animation, we're gonna first add a text plus node. So in the effects area, click on titles, find text plus and drag it to the timeline. Next, set up and style your text. Go to the beginning of the text, space over five frames using the right arrow key. And we're gonna cut it right here and delete the part on the right. Select the clip, create a copy for each of the words that you wanna show. Edit each of the clips to change the word. And let's play it and see what we have. Select all the clips, copy them, and we're gonna paste them for as much time as you want the animation to be on the screen. Next, select all the clips, right click and choose new compound clip and create. So all of our individual word clips are now included in this compound clip. In the effects area, open up effects, find the William Justice folder, just image particles and drag that right onto our compound clip with the words. And we'll go to effects and we can choose one of the presets. In this case, the number two preset works pretty well. If your animation is playing slow, there's a couple things you can do. Right click on the compound clip, you can render in place or you can choose render fusion effect filter and select just image particles. And this will render the effect so that it plays more smoothly on your computer. If you're enjoying this video, make sure that you like and subscribe and comment below. I always like hearing what you think. Um, if you have any other ideas or suggestions, I'd love to hear it. Okay, maybe you have a lot of images you wanna, sh you wanna show. You can put the images on the timeline, drop in the just image particle effect, and you can have some moving images going across your screen. This is great for a image gallery, photo display, things like that. 
Okay, to create the image animation, let's select a bunch of images from the media pool, and we're gonna drag them into the timeline. So we're gonna to wanna to do the same thing we did with the text. We're gonna to wanna to trim these to about five frames. You can adjust this depending on the how fast your animation runs. To adjust the length of all these clips, we're gonna select them. Let's make sure we're in the trim mode. Right click, choose change clip duration, and make sure you have frames set, and we're gonna set it to five frames. All the photos have been trimmed to five frames, and we have a similar setup to the text. Let's copy all of the images, and we're gonna paste them to extend the length of time the images are on the screen. So now that we have our image sequence, we're gonna highlight all the images, right click, choose a new compound clip, and create. And now all we need to do is just add the particle effect. Okay, to get them moving across the screen from left to right, we're gonna hit preset number three. With this preset, this particle start on the left edge of the screen and move across to the right. So I think we have way too many here, so let's reduce the number of particles. We're gonna set it to 0.2. So in the movement, we're just gonna reduce the turbulence. There's still way too many on the screen, so to fix that, we're gonna to go to the number and let's set it to uh, 0.05. There's gonna be fewer generated each frame. And they're shrinking down. We don't want them, I don't want them getting smaller, so we're gonna just set this curve and make it a little more flat. So the pictures are gonna stay about the same size. We can do a couple other things to make this a little more interesting. In the advanced adjustments, we can adjust the size variance. Some of the pictures will be bigger, some will be smaller. And we can also adjust the velocity variance. And this is gonna have some of the images moving faster and some of them moving slower. So let's see what we get. Now this one's really quick, really easy to do. You can use the particles to cover the screen and transition to anything that you want. Okay, to make the transition, I'm gonna, we're gonna start out with two clips in the timeline. And we're gonna transition between these with a particle effect. So click uh, media pool. And we're gonna use a DaVinci Resolve logo for this. You could really use whatever you want. Next, let's go to Effects and find the Just Image Particles and drag it onto the logo. Go to Effects. All we need to do now is just adjust the size and movement to where they fill the screen. Let's click on the Movement tab and select, set the Velocity Friction to zero. Go back to Controls. Now we're gonna just adjust the size and lifespan and velocity. So let's add a few more particles. We'll set the number of particles, let's say 1.5. So we're gonna have more particles filling the screen. That's a lot right there. So what you wanna do is wanna, let's play out the animations here and see how it goes. And right when the particles start filling the screen, make them a little bit bigger. The particles have pretty much filled the screen. So we do need to go into Fusion to do one thing here. So click this little icon up here to get into Fusion. Click Just Image Particles, and we're gonna set a keyframe on the number of particles. We're gonna go over one frame. We're gonna set it to zero so it stops emitting particles. Okay, so next all we need to do is move the animation to where it fills the screen right between the two clips. So we need to slide this over just a little bit. We're gonna see the walkway here. The screen is going to fill, and then we're going to see the next shot. And we can also use this to create an animated pattern or background. So in this case, I just added a gradient to the timeline, turned it, you cropped it, made it into a little bar, and added the effect, and we have a kind of a moving bar animation. We can also add some other effects, like uh, glows, rays, shadows, all kinds of things to make it a little bit more interesting. Click the effects library, and we're going to go to generators, and let's choose the uh, four color gradient. Um, you could really use an image here, just about anything that you want, but we'll stick with the gradient for now to keep it simple. Um, go to settings and we're going to crop it down. So go to the cropping and we're going to crop it in from the left, crop it in from the right. Let's go to the effects library and William Justice and we're going to drop on the just image particles. But you see it won't drop there because we can't apply an effect to the background generator. To fix this, all you need to do is right click on the gradient and say new compound clip. And now that it's turned into a compound clip, we can apply the effect. So take Just Image Particles and drag it on there. For this one, we'll go to Effects, and we're going to choose preset number two. And let's uh, increase the size. And for this one, I want them to spin around a little bit more. So we're going to go down here to Spin Variance, and we're going to make that a little bit bigger. So once you have this, you can adjust the parameters and um, add any kind of effects, blurs, glows, anything like that to make it a little bit more interesting. So here's just a quick example of some of the different looks you can get. Um, I applied the effect to just this, just as a colored image here. And we'll go over here and you can see that the particles are kind of moving that image around. And then I applied a few other effects to it to get some different looks. So we're gonna add a radial blur, um, light rays, and a little Gaussian blur. And we get kind of this kind of an effect. All right, so we can take that same bar and create a kind of a warp fly through space effect um, just by changing some of the parameters on the just image particles effect. For this one, we're gonna start with the pattern background and we're gonna turn it into the space warp animation. With the pattern background selected, we're gonna to go to effects. And for this one, we're gonna choose preset number five. This starts the particles out in the center of the screen. So if we click region, set the width and height to zero so that they're just coming from the very center of the screen. We're gonna to go to movement and we're gonna take the turbulence away and the friction. 
Now let's go to the controls. Let's reset this graph here because we're going to want the particles to start small and get bigger. So we're going to hit reset. See, the particles are coming from the center of the screen, but they're not aligned properly. So there's a couple things we're going to do. Let's first, let's decrease the velocity just a bit. And we're going to take the spin variance off so that the particles are not spinning at all. And the trick to get them to align is for rotation mode, set it to rotation relative to motion. And I think we need a lot more particles. Let's make them start a little bit bigger and I'll set this to 1.5. This is not too bad, but we can make it look a lot better by applying some effects. So let's go to effects. We're going to add a zoom blur and go to open effects and let's make the zoom amount a lot more. So that's going to kind of get that zoomed out look. And there's our space warp effect. Adding that zoom blur on there gives it a really cool look. All right, maybe we want to highlight something on the screen. So we can take this and create a line or arrows or whatever, whatever we want going toward a specific object on the screen so to kind of highlight it and point it out. Kind of like, you know, look over there. Okay, let's take an image and drag it into the timeline. Let's go to effects and go to William Justice, just image particles and drag that on. Next, go to effects. We're gonna take this curve and flatten it out. We'll shrink the size down a little bit. Now we want these all coming from the same origin. So go to region, set the width and height to zero, and we're gonna move them to where we wanna start from. The particles are going in all kinds of different directions. So let's go to the controls. For angle variance, let's just set it to zero. That's gonna set the particles to go in the same direction. Let's go to movement, and we're gonna take away our friction and our turbulence. Go back to controls, advanced adjustments. We're gonna change the size variance to zero, so they'll all be the exact same size. Do the number, let's set that to 0.05. Let's make it go a little bit, a little bit slower, and we're going to do. Let's change the uh, the number. Let's try 0.1 to have so we have a few more, a few more. If you need these pointing in a different direction, let's uh, bump up the lifespan to create a longer line. If you want it to go a different direction, you just change the angle, and then change the rotation mode to relative to motion. And we have a some arrows pointing out my shirt. We can take this and maybe do some superhero effects. Let's uh, create a freeze ray. Or maybe we want to do a heat wave. Okay, this one's going to be really similar to the last one. We're going to take a fireball image and drop it into the timeline. Click effects, drag the image particles on there. Go to effects and I'm going to adjust the size a little bit. So for this one, the region, we're going to set the width and height to zero. So they're all going to originate from the same place and we can move it to where you want it to start from. Let's take the friction down. We're going to still want a little bit of turbulence to mix things up. Angle variance, set it to zero. So they're all going in the same angle. Bring up our velocity and we want them to be a little bit smaller. So let's adjust this curve here. Increase the lifespan just a bit and bring the size down. I'm going to change the spin, spin variance, a little bit of the rotation. So now we just need to adjust the direction. So it's going in the wrong way. So we want it to go the direction of my hand. So we're just going to change the angle. So let's go back to the region. Next, all I did is I timed it with when I brought my hand up. I wanted the particles to start. So right in there is where I want them to start. Uh, you can right click on it and do render in place to get it to play quicker. I'm going to take the zoom blur and put that right on the clip. And there we go. Okay, maybe we want to add some animated effects. Let's uh, have some particles kind of fall down out of that lamp right there. Or maybe something kind of bubbling up from the bottom of the screen. Okay, last thing is a text reveal. This one's pretty interesting. We can put some text on the screen and have the particles come up through the text to reveal what the text says. Let's start by adding some text. So we'll go to effects, titles, and add a text plus node. And we'll set up our text. Then let's add an image right above it that's gonna be our particle image. Apply the particle effect. Let's adjust the settings. We're gonna do effects. This one, we're gonna want it to be about the same size. Let's make it a little bit smaller. And we want the particles to go up. So we're going to set the angle variance to zero and the angle to 90. So the particles will be going up. Now we want the particles to start below the text and move up through it. So we're going to go to region, we want the full width, and we're going to set the, the height to zero and change the y, set, y offset moving it down. So they're going to start below the text. In movement, let's take the friction all the way down so they'll keep on moving. And obviously they're not going to fill the text, so we need to make some adjustments. We're going to add more particles. And let's put some spin and rotation on them. Okay, so we have quite a few particles, but they're, they're stopping a little bit. So let's bump up the velocity and that'll, that'll have a move up faster through there. And I'm gonna render this. So I'm gonna right click on it and do render in place. Place really smooth now. 
Now, to, what we need to do is just set the composite mode. So, so for the particles, we're going to set the composite mode to foreground. Okay, for the text, we're going to change the composite mode. Hit settings and set composite mode to alpha. And you can see that masks out so that we only see the particles where the text is. And you can see them coming up through the text. The last thing I did here was I copied the text. You hit alt and drag it up to create a copy of it. Went to the, tech, the title area, shading, and then for the first element, I changed it to outline. Okay, that's 10 quick effects. You can download them from my website, buildjustice.com. Um, go into the timeline effects area and find just image particles. You can download the DRFX file, double click on it to install it into DaVinci Resolve 17. And then you can remember you can find it in the effects area under William Justice. If you enjoy my videos, make sure that you like and subscribe. Um, comment below. I'd really love to hear, hear what you think. And if you have any other ideas for some different things you can do with this effect, um, let me know. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you soon.